So today, before I begin lesson 1.2, I want to go over a few of the homework questions from 1.1, in particular number 7, which asks you to identify the relation and predict whether or not it's going to be a function by using the vertical line test, and they ask you also to graph it. So the first equation is this, y equals 5 minus 2x. So when you look at that equation, you're probably going to say, well, I don't even know what it looks like. I'm, I'm going to have to make a table of values. Well, you could, but it's not necessary because I think you should be able to recognize, first of all, that it is linear because the degree of the x value is 1. And if we look at this format, which you should be very familiar with from grade 9 math, y equals mx plus b, that is the equation of the line in slope y-intercept form. So what you want to do is rearrange this equation first. So I now have y equals minus 2x plus 5. And now I know that the slope is minus 2 and the y-intercept is 5. So quickly sketching that over here, I'm just going to make a nice little coordinate plane. And you know your y-intercept is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I put my dot there. And the slope is minus 2. That's the rise over the run. So I have minus 2 over 1. Remember that any whole number can be written over 1 to give you the run if you're uncertain. It's much easier when it's a fraction, right? Like 2 thirds. So this says I go down 2 and write 1. So from here I would go down 2, write 1. And I could keep going down 2, write 1. And if I made enough of them, I only really need two for a line. I draw a line through it, and that is the equation of the line, y equals minus 2x plus 5. Now the question is, is this a function? Well, of course it's a function. It's a line. And if I do a vertical line test, which means I draw vertical lines here, you can see that every value of x has one and only one value for y. So I'm going to do um, C, 7C as well, because that's another one that some people had some trouble with. Minus 3 quarters, x plus 3 squared, plus 1. Now, if you remember your grade 10 math, and I'm sure some of you have forgotten a lot of this. It's, it's been a while. Summer's been lovely. This, you know it's a quadratic. It's a quadratic, quadratic because it has a degree of 2. And you should be able to identify the vertex from this. If this is plus 3, it means the vertex would be minus 3 and 1. Minus 3 and 1. What else can we tell from this equation about a parabola, though? The parabola, because it's negative, means it's going to be concave down. It's going to be concave down parabola. I know where the vertex is. And 3 quarters means that it has been vertically compressed. Vertically compressed by a factor of 3 quarters. So making a quick sketch of this, all I have to do is find the vertex, minus 3 and 1, right here. It's not important that I know where the x-intercepts are. The, the question just asked me to sketch the function and do a vertical line test on it. So a regular parabola, meaning y equals x squared, would go over 1, down 1. But this one, because it's minus 3 quarters, it's going to be a little steeper. Sorry, a little flatter. So it's going to be more like this. Now, it's not that important that you know exactly where it's going to cross. The point is that you know that it's a concave down parabola with a vertex of minus 3 and 1. It's been vertically compressed. So here's your regular parabola, right? y equals x squared. If you compress it, it goes like this, more like a bowl. If you stretch it, it goes steeper, like that. So there's a good, good sketch of my parabola. I do a vertical line test on it, and bam. It's okay. It passes a vertical line test. So yes, it is a function. <clears throat> now the one that's really tricked everyone in my class was this one. x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Now I bet some of you are saying, oh, this isn't 
a quadratic. It has a degree two. This has a degree two. Oh, I don't even know what this is. Well, you should remember from grade 10 math. This is from the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, do you know what it is? You should. It's a circle. It's a circle with a radius of the square root of 25. So if r squared is 25, then r is equal to the square root of 25, actually plus or minus. So the radius, which has to be a positive length, the radius is going to be 5. But if you were to sketch it, it would have all of these points of 5. So this would be plus 5, minus 5, plus 5, minus 5. And your circle is going to go like that. It's not a very great circle, but it does the trick. <clears throat> now the question is, is this a function? Well, if you listen to section 1.1, you would have noticed that if I draw a vertical line here, this is crossing at more than one point. So the answer is no, it is not a function. Not a function. So the trick to these questions was to recognize whether or not they were functions or what type of functions you're dealing with. Linear, quadratic, circle, not a function. First two are, the last one is not. Okay, so that being done, I mean, this is, if you have any other questions from the homework, you should um, put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. So today's lesson is going to be on what is function notation? Function notation. Okay, so all of a sudden you're being um, asked to give the equation. You're talking about functions like they had another word for the y value. So if I had a function, let's say, let's use a quadratic, one that you should know y equals x squared plus 2. Let's say that's my function. You can write this in function notation simply by making the y f at x. f at x equals x squared plus 2. So all that means is that I'm talking about this function. This has replaced the y and that this x is going to tell me if I put in a value for x, I'm going to get a height for y. Now you've been doing that all along, right? You put in a value for x. If you wanted to sketch this, you could put in 0, you could put in 1, you could put in 2, you could put in negative 1, negative 2. Matter of fact, you can put in any value of real numbers and get an answer for y. The answer, y in this case, is the height of the function for some value of x. So if I say f at x equals x squared plus 2, and I say, well, what's f at 1? Well, f at 1 just means I'm going to substitute in a 1 where I see an x, and I'm going to evaluate it. 1 squared is 1 plus 2 is 3. So f at 1 is 3, and I could use those coordinates 1, 3 to graph the function. Now, it's not always f at x. They do change them around. You can have g at x, h at x. Often you'll see things like h at t especially when they're talking about a height of a function, such as an equation like this. So it'll say, what is the height at a certain time? So you plug in the time, you find the height. Now in your homework questions, they ask you a couple of other little things where they, they change what the F means. They'll say, well, let's go back to this X squared plus two. They'll say, what is f at 3 minus 5? When it's inside the brackets here, just using, remember, your bed mass rules, you always had to, to um, work with the brackets first, right? So f at 3 minus 5 is simply f at minus 2. So f at minus 2 would be minus 2 squared plus 2. I'm still using this equation over here. So minus 2 squared is 4 plus 2 gives me 6 and that would be f at 3 minus 5. Now there's also another way of doing this. They might ask you what is f at 3 
minus f at 5. This is not equal to f at 3 minus 5. Just so you know right away, this is not the same thing. This says, what is the height of the function when x is 3 minus the height of the function when f is 5? So if I continue, let's just take this off the equation here. We'll go back here. f at 3, f at 3. So I plug in 3, and that would be f at 3 minus f at 5. That would be 5 squared plus 2. And so 3 squared is 9, plus 2 is 11, and 5 squared is 25 plus 2. Oh goodness, my pencil is breaking every time I touch it. That's 27. So 11 minus 27, let me fix that for you here. 11 minus 27 is minus 15. So you can see that this is not the same thing as f at 3 minus 5. So those are the, the little tricks or some of the little questions they asked you in the homework question. Um, they also have some um, graphs where they ask you to find the values on, on a grid. So let's say I have something like this. This is going to be my function. Now remember, function, as long as it doesn't go over the two values on top of one another, it will be a function. Okay, so let's say this is 1, this is going to be 2, this is 3, this is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this point's going to be 4, 4, this point will be 3, 2, this point will be 2 minus 1, and this will be 1, 1. So they don't write all these values in for you, they just, uh, sorry, that's 4, 4. They just write them in like that, and then they ask you, what is f at, um, let's say, f at 3 plus f at 1? So you don't have an equation to plug it into this time. This time you look at the graph. So you say, whoa, f at 3. f at 3 is 2, so f at 3 is 2, plus f at 1, f at 1 is 1. That's the height when x is 1 is 1. So that gives me 3. Okay, so that's all there really is to function notation. It's just another way of using um, or, or replacing y in an equation so that you can say what variable for your domain you're going to be using. In this case, I'm doing, if I was to graph this, I would have height versus time, right? So I'd have h at t on this axis now, and this would be t. So h at t would give me some parabola here. It's got uh, time zero was at six, and then it, it's going to go up and come back down, right? Something like that. So your x variable, it's not x anymore, it's t, and my height at some time t. But this one, f at x, that's probably the one you'll see the most. And again, it is said f at x, f at x. And that's it for today, and there goes my pencil. I hope that helps you out. And uh, we'll take a look at some of the homework questions, or if you have any you'd like me to do, just send a note in the, in the um, comments below. Bye.